Devin Booker dropped 51 and three quarters on an unheard of 20 for 25 shooting from the floor. The Suns have won six straight games and sit at the top of the Western Conference. And while they were definitely humbled in last year's playoffs, they've done a flawless job of bouncing back so far. Meanwhile, the team that destroyed them in Game 7 of Round 2 last year in Luka's Mavericks are 11th in the conference, all without Chris Paul. Here's why Phoenix is showing us they want another chance at earning back our respect. Before going further in depth on all of that and more, which I promise you can't miss, just 9.4% of you watching are subscribed, so subscribe if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and make sure you're fully up to date with the channel by following at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. In the Suns' blowout W over the Chicago Bulls, every headline was about Booker dropping a historic 51 piece in three quarters, which we'll get right to breaking down. But first, it's worth noting that Devin combined with DeAndre Ayton to give Coach of the Month Monty Williams 81 points. DA had a monster 30-point, 14-board, and 2-block showing, where he was a team's second-best behind Booker, plus 17. Off the bench, Landry Shamit along with Damian Lee and Jack Landale, who were heavily talked about in my last Suns video, combined for a crucial 28 points. Moving on to D-Book, who's showing that he's hungry to get back to the NBA Finals and this time receive his first ring. I think he's also eager to gain back the respect from the media and fans, which he and his team lost in part after the 2022 playoffs. However, as the rivaled Mavericks are really struggling with their chemistry, the Suns are out to make amends for their playoff woes as they're firing through the comp right now. Phoenix is one of three teams next to the Cleveland Cavaliers and New Orleans Pelicans with both a top 10 offensive and defensive rating. Over Booker's last seven games, he's averaged 33.9 points, 6.7 boards, 5.7 dimes on 51% shooting from the field and 38% shooting from distance. The Suns are 6-1 over that span and have won six consecutive. Devin Booker's the best all-around NBA shooting guard in terms of his ability to play both ends of the court and the balance of his game offensively between his playmaking and scoring. There's simply no two guard across the association who can match his value. Booker just became the second player over the last 25 years to score 50 points on 80% true shooting through the first three quarters of a game, joining James Harden, who did it five years ago against Utah. Somehow, Booker also found a way to drop six dimes, which in addition to the 51 piece, proved to us how he can put the Suns on his back with his overall shot creation, not just strictly with his scoring. That said, Booker's elusiveness and shooting balance when working out of either one-on-ones or pick-and-rolls is hard not to talk about. Caruso is one of the better guard defenders in the league, and Alex shows off excellent screen navigation as he bodies off Biombo's on-ball pick, but despite being in traffic, Devin just lifts his knee up and uses the ever-so-small height advantage that he has over the bald Mamba for the deuce. So far on pull-up jumpers, Booker's making 50% of his non-three-point attempts, and with a hand in his face, meaning a defender zero to two feet away from him like Caruso was all game, Devin's also making an impressive 52.4% of his jumpers. This man's poise, shiftiness, and focus to get either defenders on his hip, split double teams, and drain Kobe Bryant-type tough shots off the bounce makes him a one-of-a-kind type bucket getter. The Suns have become memed for posting workouts of themselves after winning games and developing the phrase of quote-unquote, winner's work. Realistically, keeping a level head is the most important factor to any team's ascension to the next level. Filming yourself lifting weights after W's and uploading it to the gram quite simply won't get you there. The success of this Suns team greatly relies on the consistency of DeAndre Ayton, who's coming off a November where he lived up to that. 2018's number one pick out of Arizona only had one bad night the entire month, which came in the second game of it against Portland, and posted an 18-point, one-block-per-game double-double on 63% shooting. DeAndre has a lot to prove to both himself and this Suns fanbase after he came up short in Game 7, being limited to 17 minutes in that winner-go-home outing, and posting not-so-gaudy numbers of 5 points, 4 boards, while failing to block a shot. From your main low-post option and rim protector with a 30 plus million dollar cap hit for the next four years that's simply not going to cut it so we're going to have to see Aiton continue to play like a top center in basketball like he is now especially when Phoenix needs him to the most in the playoffs 
Mostly it's about DeAndre being versatile enough in terms of his laterality, guarding both drop coverage and switching onto the speediest guards in basketball. While DeAndre may not ever be elite at doing that, if he wants his minutes to stay consistent once small ball becomes even more popular in the postseason, his foot speed is definitely something that he's got to improve on. So far, Ayton's doing a solid job proving he can be adaptable to those small ball lineups in 22-23. As Phoenix's man in the middle ranks 7th among centers in defensive rating, we know DeAndre as a top 5 center in the game of basketball, mostly due to his offense. He's really not known for being that great of a rim protector. While he is a somewhat decent shot blocker, fact of the matter is, if he doesn't get more mobile or increase his awareness defensively, he's never going to be in that same upper echelon of five men like Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid are. As I mentioned, Ayton put up an 18-point double-double this past month, which is right around what he's averaging on this young season overall, but just imagine if his stat line said 25-10 and 10 as opposed to 17-10. and 10. Ayton's capable of averaging 25 with his solid motor, beastly athleticism, and finesse around the hoop, but in my opinion, his IQ and maturity are the only things holding him back from his play being consistent. Just take the 30 and 14 night DeAndre just had against big body center Nikola Vucevic. There's no reason the former number one pick can't be producing around that purely off his energy and focus on a night to night basis. So despite the Suns current success, I see this team getting even better if DeAndre can increase his numbers that is. If that happens, I think they increase their lead at the top of the West. But really, it's not about that at all for this Suns team with championship aspirations. You can bet Coach Monty has his guys 1 through 15 intensely zoned in on molding into the scariest possible monster they can be once April, May, and June hit. What does DeAndre Ayton need to do to reach Embiid or Jokic territory? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today speaks winners from my last two uploads are firstly Jonah Jenkins, who says Derek White deserves more respect, he's having the best season of his career, and if you look at the numbers, you would not understand the extent of his performance, he's shooting 45% from three. And secondly to Ken Saluto, who says Dre was the Warriors MVP in Minnesota. He's locked in offensively and defensively. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.